Welcome back to all my subscribers and to anyone who is new today. Welcome to Kylie's Kitchen. Today we are going to do chicken pesto pasta. This is one of my favorite dishes. Actually, I'm not sure how many times I've said that before because a lot of these are my favorite dishes. That's why I love being in the kitchen and I love cooking. But the reason it's one of my favorites is because it's hearty and it's great to put away in the freezer when you've got one of those days where you think, I really am just so exhausted. I don't want to cook, but I want a great meal for my partner, husband, for myself, for the kids, then you can pull this out and well, heat it up in the microwave. No one will know the difference. Let's get cooking. pasta Kylie style this is what you're going to need two chicken breasts 500 grams of penne pasta again never matters what brand get it from any supermarket some basil fresh basil cream we're going to need some cream a measuring jug to measure how much cream you're gonna need you'll need a pot for your pasta then you'll need a strainer and you'll also need another dish that is big enough to mix it all together. You'll need some fresh cherry tomatoes, 500 grams at least, and you'll also need some sun-dried tomatoes. You won't be using the whole jar, but you will need them. Some parmesan cheese, fresh parmesan cheese to grate at the end of the dish and also a jar, a 190 gram jar of pesto. Salt and pepper for flavor and oil. You'll also need a chopping board and a decent knife to cut up your chicken breast. So let's get cooking. Time to cook our pasta. I've got some boiling water over the stove. I actually um, boil the kettle and put the water in boiling hot and then obviously let it boil and that obviously process happens a lot quicker for me. So I am going to use the 500 grams of my pasta straight into the water, stir it around, add a little bit of olive oil to make sure that the pasta doesn't stick together. And I always do like to make sure that the water is lightly salted. I think a good pasta time is 11 minutes. Always make sure that it's on um, a medium to high heat and never walk away from your pasta just in case the water does overflow. So we'll come back to that. While that's cooking away, we are going to chop up our chicken and get ready to start cooking the chicken for our chicken pesto pasta. Now it's time to chop up our chicken breast. I personally like to get rid of um, all the fat. That's just my style when it comes to chicken breast. So we're just gonna cut it up nice and, I guess the word is sort of small and thin. I want it to taste moist and fresh. And I think sometimes when chicken, especially chicken breast, is too thick, it can get dry really, really quickly, especially if you're going to fry it. I always cut the way the grain's going when it comes to chicken. Makes it nice and simple. And then put it aside in a bowl what we're going to do is we're going to fry the chicken after we get the pasta, so, uh, the pasta out because I don't want to have to use another frying pan. I'm just going to use the same saucepan because eventually it's all going in the same saucepan. All the tomatoes, the pesto and the pasta. So we'll just keep that same saucepan going with a lot of heat and keep all the flavor in that one saucepan. I think that's the uh, added bonus to cooking with one saucepan. Flavor stays where you put it. Chicken and me don't mix when it comes to pink or red. You're out. So I wanna make sure that we don't overcook the chicken. 
as I was just mentioning before, nice small pieces so that the uh, chicken stays nice and moist. We are mixing it with pasta. Pasta can be, you know, quite dry and dense, so we want to make sure that there's a lot of moisture and we're going to add some great taste when it comes to the tomato, the basil, the parmesan cheese and the cream. My mouth is watering already. Okay, let's get cooking. When it comes to this chicken, we are going to be putting it straight into that saucepan but I think I can hear the timer just about to go off because our pasta has probably already been cooking away for about 11 minutes. Now that we've cut up our chicken, we are going to be using the same saucepan to actually cook the chicken. And I'm wanting you to have the minimal amount of things that you need possible. And I think the timer is gonna go off really, really soon. There it is because our penne pasta is ready. So let's go and check out our pasta. We're going to drain it and prepare the next steps we need. Okay, so this is it, ready, 11 minutes. Our penne pasta needs to go into the strainer now. I like to run my pasta through with boiling water, so I just make sure that the tap is on hot and it actually gets to boiling, only because I don't really want my pasta to cool down. And this will just make sure that it's not gluggy and it gets rid of all the starch that's sitting around your pasta at the moment. I'm just gonna let that drain out a little bit. Um, we are going to be using that very soon, but we're gonna go back to the stove and we're going to be cooking our chicken breast in the exact same pot. I'm just gonna quickly rinse that out. So in goes our chicken. I'm wanting to brown the chicken just enough, but keep it nice and moist. So. I think sometimes with chicken you don't need to keep swooshing it around, you actually just need the one side to cook enough first and then turn them around and get the other side done. Don't try and be all fancy. I know I like a tap to feel like a chef but I personally don't think you need to keep moving the chicken around too much as long as it's separated but realistically you'll be able to separate it once you flip it over as well. So salt and pepper just to season the chicken. I do like a decent amount of pepper. I think that it gives a lot of flavor. Obviously for cholesterol reasons, I don't overdo the salt, but I do make sure that there is enough for flavor. Otherwise, a lot of foods can be quite bland. Let's make sure that it's, the chicken pieces are separated. Put it on nice and high. Personally, if you were to do three uh, chicken, chicken breasts, I would want to make sure that you had it on a bigger frying pan. The reason I say that is if you're going to do all, them, all of them at the same time, what ends up happening is there is so much chicken and the moisture from the chicken then starts to turn it into a steam boil style chicken and that's not what we're trying to achieve. We do want it to be nice and moist, but we still won't want to have that little bit of brownness on either side of the chicken. So just bear that in mind. Now for me, it's time to flip them over a little bit. Move the chicken around and make sure we get each side to get a little bit of brownness. Coming along just nicely. Next step, what we're going to do is cut up our cherry tomatoes. They are already washed and we'll also cut up some of the sun-dried tomatoes. I'll show you pretty much the portions that I use. And as I've always said, I'm not about portion size per se when it comes to measurements. I think it's all about what you really like. If you don't like sun-dried tomatoes, don't use them at all. Obviously, you can use more cherry tomatoes or you can just use as I've um, shown you. But as I say, as you wish. So we're gonna cut up uh, 500 grams of cherry tomatoes in half. So I also add sun-dried tomatoes to this recipe. I mentioned before, if you don't like sun-dried tomatoes, keep them out and you can just add a few more cherry tomatoes, obviously for flavor and for that beautiful moisture. The tomatoes mix so beautifully with the pesto sauce and they are the two standout features of this dish that we're creating today. So with the sun-dried tomatoes, as I mentioned, just have a jar handy but use as many as you like. So I just look at the 500 grams and then I think, what do I want this dish to taste like? Do I want it to be stronger on the cherry tomato side or would I prefer it to be stronger on the sun-dried tomato side? Uh, for most people who eat sun-dried tomatoes, they would know that they actually are quite 
potent in flavour. So today I'm going to use seven. It's just the vibe I'm getting. Seven's the lucky number. So I chopped them up quite small or reasonably small and that's because I want bite sizes of the flavour in each mouthful. As I mentioned, you can add 14, you can double that. Just depends on what you really want your dish to taste like. Now what we're going to do is check our chicken, which I'm sure is ready. And then we're going to quickly for about maybe anywhere between two to four minutes, depending on the heat of your saucepan, we're going to cook the tomato just that little bit and then we're going to add it all together and see what we've got. Okay, our chicken is looking ready, still quite moist, which is exactly what we want and not overly cooked. We're going to pop that into a dish. And you can cover it if you're actually going to eat this dish straight away and you want everything to stay warm, you can cover it just to keep the warmth in. But we're going to chuck it back in very soon. Sometimes the easiest way to cover any dish, if you don't have any foil, just get another plate and put it on the top. So we're going to then turn our saucepan back on nice and warm. Remember it is pretty warm already because we've been cooking everything in there. We've only got cooked chicken in there, so don't worry, there's no raw chicken that I'm mixing. Pop a little bit of oil in and now what we're going to do is we're going to pop in our tomatoes and just let them sit for probably anywhere between two to four minutes, depending on how hot your stove is. I know everyone's medium to high seems to be a little bit different. When I cook at my mum's or cook at my sister's, I always seem to feel like everyone's temperatures are just that little bit different. That's why I love cooking in my own kitchen. Because I know what I'm gonna get. Love seeing that steam come off the beautiful tomatoes. So next thing that we're going to do, once our tomato is cooked, we're going to be adding in our cream. We're also going to add in our pasta, our pesto. We're going to mix it all together, whack in the chicken and let it simmer for a little while so we can marinate all those beautiful flavours together for our chicken pesto pasta. So our tomatoes are looking just divine. And now the next step is to join it all together. My, uh, my pick, personally, is I put the cream in first because I really do want the cream to make that sauce and make it yummy by combining it with the flavours that already sit in the tomato. And then the next step for me is the pesto. Again, I just want to make sure that the pesto, the cream and the tomato all heat up together and infuse each other. I do put the whole 190 gram jar in. Just don't do that. That, that, that bit, that bit. That, that's not part of the recipe, not that part. Next step, we're going to pop in our chicken. We're gonna let this all simmer for about five minutes together. Make sure you mix the chicken through with the pesto and the cream so it really gets those flavors through every single part of ingredient that you've popped in there. Because the next step is our pasta. And the pasta will absorb pretty much most of the sauce. So you wanna make sure that the chicken has really had a chance to marinate. Now, this is what I normally do. I've cooked the 500, but if you have changed the dish whatsoever and you don't have as much cream or you might have had a lot more tomatoes, you might be taking away that sauce and that level of sauce. So never overdo the, the pasta, otherwise you'll bust the sauce. Less is more. So even if you only put in 400 grams, but you've got that 100 grams just in case. So what I normally do is pop it all in, stir it around and check the consistency first. And then you'll know whether you've got room to move or not. Now you're not meant to have a free flowing sauce like say a bolognese sauce where we have that sort of saucy tomato sauce around the pasta. It's, it's a different consistency. See, I don't want it to be too dry. If it ever was too dry, just grab some more cream and pop it in. But look at that, that is looking just divine. 
Now, with this consistency, I can tell that I can actually add, if you want to just come and have a quick closer look, I can tell that I can actually add more pasta. As I said, I've actually still got some sauce around. Again, I don't want to deplete all of that sauce because that's the moisture. But like I said, if you want to add a little more cream and use all of that 500 grams of pasta, you can do. But if you want to stop a little earlier because you want to have a different consistency, you want it to be even more moist, then please do that as well. So 450 grams I've used of my penne pasta. And that is looking sensational. This is exactly how I want it to be. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like dished up with some fresh, freshly shaved Parmesan cheese. And also, if you're into it, a little bit of chili flakes. Bellissimo. The smell of fresh basil, just beautiful. I have picked the best looking, of course. Three leaves. Okay, I'm just adding another one. Four. Basil, and I've got a beautiful block of Parmesan cheese that I'm just going to grate and get a little bit of that yumminess for the top of my dish. So next step, we are going to pop our chicken pesto pasta into this bowl and I'm going to show you what it looks like finished and I might even tell you how it tastes. Hmm. Here we go, smelling absolutely divine. I'm just going to shimmy it. Let's see if I can shimmy. Yes. She's doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it well. Can you tell that this bowl is the size for a male? Alrighty. Make sure that we get some of that beautiful tomato. Tomato, tomato. So this is our beautiful chicken pesto pasta. We're gonna grab our Parmesan cheese. I'm just gonna break it up that little bit more, dash it on the top. A little bit of greenery, so it looks pretty. It's all about presentation. And this is it, da-da. Kylie's chicken pesto pasta. I hope you love it as much as we do. For those of you who don't know, this is my absolute favorite part of any recipe that I cook. It's called gloves off and time to try. My chicken pesto pasta, let's give it a whirl. Make sure I've got a little bit of everything. I'm going to find one of those tomatoes. There it is. Mmm. This is like so horrible. You would never. No. Nah, I don't think that you should eat this one. Mmm. Mmm. No. No, I wouldn't. It's um. There's something not right about it. Just kidding. Yum. I'm loving it. The consistency is great. I'm glad that I backed off on the 50 grams of the pasta um, and kept it more moist with the cream. Yep. Still as good as the other three spoonfuls. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Thanks for joining me in Kylie's Kitchen. Do you have something on my teeth? I think that's the only concern when it comes to pesto. Uh, yeah, maybe this isn't a good dish for your first date. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you loved this video, we have so many more. So make sure you do subscribe. Thanks for watching. And uh, please be sure to comment down below. We'd love to hear what you think. If there's a recipe you'd love to see me cook, if there's a recipe you'd love to pass on to me, I would absolutely love to try it in Kylie's Kitchen. We'll see you next time. Let's just turn that off. Let's just turn that off. Okay, let's really just turn it off. I'm not quite sure why it's not. It's off.